So we're here and it's uh, Easter Friday, Good Friday, and uh, many millions around the world today are remembering and giving consideration to the indescribable sacrifice of Jesus for our sins. And uh, this this whole subject, I mean, sometimes we can find that the gospel is so utterly sanitized that uh, we forget just the sheer horror of the cross. You know, the scriptures tell us in Isaiah that he was so beaten and so marred and so mauled that... Uh, it, actually, in the Message Bible, Isaiah 52 verse 14 describes it as everyone was appalled. He didn't even look human, a ruined face, disfig disfigured past recognition. And, you know, when we think about what we're looking at, when we think about the horror of that, when we think about how uh, how men's hearts just retracted and, and they wanted to hide their eyes from what they were looking at, what, what indeed were we witnessing? What were they looking upon? You know, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, um, Paul says this of the Galatians. And the interesting thing is the Galatian disciples, the Galatian Christians, you know, had never actually seen Christ for themselves. They didn't they weren't there at, at Calvary watching him crucified. They weren't standing uh, on the on the Golgotha Hill uh, witnessing and seeing what was taking place as he was nailed and lifted up on that uh, on that piece of wood. And yet uh, Paul says, Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And, you know, really, I, I, it got me asking, have I looked upon him? Have I, have I actually looked upon? Has he been evidently set forth before me, crucified for my sin? You know, I, I, and I began to pray. I began to pray, and over several weeks, I prayed, Lord, I, like the Galatians, I want to appreciate the price that was paid for my freedom. I want to appreciate the Lord. It was not me who had to go through that that horror and that pain and that, that judgment for my rebellion and my rebellious heart. And and then as I was praying one day, I, I, I do something called tabernacle prayer. Um, and tabernacle prayer is just such um, so full of revelatory insight into kind of how the gospel is applied in our lives. It's based on the um, approach to God that we see in the uh, tabernacle laid out in the tabernacle. And um, but uh, you know, it's a, this isn't this isn't so much about tabernacle prayer. But I do like really encourage you, you know, look into that. Um, if you go to um, my website, uh, there'll be some uh, teacher. There's some teaching on it that I, that I do. And um, I, I saw him, you know, and, and I'm looking uh, as I'm praying in this kind of vision that I have. Uh, I, I see Jesus. But the thing is, it wasn't Jesus on the cross. It was me. You know, and, and there he is nailed to the cross. And, you know, it was not it wasn't so much the form that struck me. It was what happened next uh, that the it just that that man on the cross that, that was me just tore open. And all of this filth, just the just the stench and the horror and the, just this sticky stream of filth. Uh, the way I described it was like a witch's brew of pride and lust and, uh, you know, just affection for the world's lies and licentiousness and lukewarmness and envy and adultery and lying, conniving, you name it. It was there and it was just pouring out. And then I see Jesus and I look and I see Jesus 
And like a, like a black hole sucks in everything that comes into its vicinity, all of this darkness, all of this filth was being siphoned into him, sucking it, drawing it into himself, relentlessly and selflessly taking it upon himself. And he became sin before my eyes. The scriptures say that he became sin. And that's why the why the the, the cross is so horrifying. We we're appalled at what we see there, but what we see with the natural eyes is nothing compared to what's happening in the spirit. It wasn't the nails that that uh, that that uh, kept him there. It was his love for you and I, and it was but it was our sin that pinned him to the cross. You know, it was it was the, the, the heartless, murderous nature of iniquity and rebellion against God that whipped him raw. Sin has no other aim but your death and mine. Its mandate is your demise. And yet, you know, sometimes we fail to see through sin's disguise. It comes parading itself it, like this, like this coquettish, whorish, like seductive way it comes and leans into our flesh, the lust of our eyes, the pride of life and offers so much to us, like in all smeared in its cheap makeup and perfume, whatever it may be. You know, if, if you, it might be lusts of the flesh for one, it might be the lust of the eyes for another, it might be the pride of life. But one way or another, it seeks to come in and entice us. And then once we have given ourselves over to it, it then dons a judge's cap and begins to condemn us. You know, one minute, this shameless enticement to sin, and then the next, a shameful condemnation. And we ourselves then join the jury in agreement. Shame beats on us. And like we're, we're, we're caught in this cycle of tearful sorrows and promises that, uh, of tomorrow. That we all oh, will never do this again. We, we won't live this way. And so all of that confusion, all of that pain, all of that fear, all of that helpless, hopeless nature was taken by Christ on the cross. How amazing the price that he paid for us. You know, can we ever really imagine the cost that was paid that night on uh, in Gethsemane when he sweat blood? Can we ever really comprehend just how deep and how how horrifying it must have been for the spotless, beautiful, sinless son of God to become sin? to siphon the sins of the world into his own being and then crucify them on the cross. Take all of the world's confusion, all of the world's unrighteousness, all of the, the generations, every generation swallowed up in his body on the cross and then sacrificed buried in the ground. And all of this, all of this, so grace could be offered freely to us. We were sinners and yes, we've become saints, but let us never forget the price that was paid for our sin. You know, this is it. Salvation is offered freely, but it is far from free. The full and fearful price was paid on the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ. And today, you know, as I say, many people are remembering what took place. And I could have written about any number of things. I could have spoken about any number of things. But wow, Jesus, 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully uh, it's been an encouragement to you today. If you want to connect any further, you can do so through my website at davidleemartin.com. Have a great day.